Hello everyone and welcome to EduSearch Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to answer some of the very commonly asked questions about a complex surgical procedure that is a Whipple's procedure. A Whipple's procedure is a surgical procedure that we do to treat a lot of diseases that involves the complex area that encompasses the pancreas, the common bile duct, the gallbladder and the first part of the small intestine that is the duodenum right normal intestinal tract anatomy is that the stomach drains into the small intestine the first part of small intestine is known as duodenum liver produces bile which goes as a storage into the gallbladder and gallbladder excretes this bile into the intestine to help in the digestion of the food through the common bile duct after this, the pancreatic enzymes through the pancreatic duct open into the intestine through what is known as an ampulla in unison with the common bile duct and secrete all the pancreatic juices into the intestine. So, in the Whipple's procedure, we remove the entire first part of the small intestine that is the duodenum, the uppermost part of the small intestine that is the jejunum we remove part of the pancreas which is the head and part of the neck of the pancreas we remove the common bile duct and we remove the gallbladder so this entire specimen as marked in the infographic below is removed and this specimen is then sent for pathology after this the remaining organs need to be joined again right for the digestion to happen so this surgery entails creation of joints of pancreas with the intestine the bile duct with the intestine and the stomach with the intestine so there are three different joints that we create in this surgery so as you can see removing all these parts and rejoining all the parts is a surgery that takes time anywhere from 4 hours to 10 to 12 hours depending on the extent of disease the need for vascular resection because pancreas is surrounded by a lot of delicate vascular structures if they are involved in the tumor we may have to cut part of the vessels and join them back together so all these different issues can take the surgery up to 8 to 10 hours it is more important that the surgery is safely performed by an experienced team all of you may be wondering why to perform such a complex procedure right why not to remove only a part of the pancreas why not to remove only a part of the bile duct where there are different surgical options for different areas of the body Whipple's procedure has some specific indications such as diseases of the ampulla pancreatic head carcinoma or cancer or pancreatic head neuroendocrine tumor or cystic neoplasm of pancreas or bile duct adenocarcinomas basically cancers in that area neuroendocrine tumors in that area are very common indications for performing vapor procedures sometimes even after road traffic accidents the patients end up with bad injuries in this area and that may again entail a vapor procedure in a trauma setting right so these are some of the indications for which this surgery is performed in each individual case, it is a good question to ask your doctor of why this surgery is performed in your case and are there any options like extrahepatic bile duct resection or removing only the upper part of duodenum which is known as a supra ampullary duodenectomy or lower part of duodenum or only a part of pancreas. So a lot of factors are taken into consideration when we decide that our patient needs a Whipple procedure right now after you know that you need a Whipple procedure the most commonly asked question is whether it will be an open surgery or a laparoscopic surgery or a robotic surgery well a Whipple procedure can be performed by all the three approaches but as of now the open pancreatic duodenectomy is the standard of care Laparoscopy and robotics are being utilized for a Whipple procedure but they have not stood the test of time like the open procedure. However, experienced surgeons and advanced centers can offer you laparoscopy and robotics for a Whipple procedure. Though as of now, where we stand in literature, open Whipple's procedure is the gold standard. 
like i said before it takes 4 to 6 hours even in open surgery laparoscopy and robotics adds more time to it and the joints are very tricky it's a single shot at this surgery so as of now open surgery offers the best advantage as we grow in technology and advances in future laparoscopy and robotics may become the mainstay in this surgery also like they have become mainstay in a lot of other surgeries right however when we discuss approaches we have to understand that mostly the vipers procedure is going to be done for a cancer indication and we need oncological data of 5 and 10 years to establish whether open surgery is the gold standard or laparoscopy and robotic have now replaced open surgery as of now that data is limited and that is why we don't routinely advocate a laparoscopic or a robotic vipal in our center as of now whether you are the patient who is watching the video or you are the caretaker who is going to prepare your patient there are some very common points that you need to take care of if the patient is on blood thinners then the patient should consult the cardiologist or the neurologist or the physician who has started the blood thinners and the blood thinners need to be stopped 4 to 5 days prior to surgery because this is a major surgery and we can't operate a patient for a vipal procedure on blood thinners so this needs to be taken into consideration and a very important point that can otherwise postpone your surgery if not taken into consideration usual fasting is six hours prior to surgery usually vipals is performed as a first slot for all the surgeons because it's a long surgery so we would like to begin around eight or nine in the morning for that the fasting starts from 2 a.m the patient is to be admitted usually a day prior we always recommend that the patients are seen by the anesthetist in the outpatient department because this patient of course needs a general anesthesia so general anesthetic fitness is very important in these cases once you have got your fitness test which may include cardiac workup lung related workup kidney related workup as well as work up for other diseases that you may have you can then get admitted a day prior to surgery get all the blood works done as per the hospital protocols other than fasting you are also required to have a bath prior to surgery shave your body or clip the hair based on the hospital protocols you are given an antibiotic shot one hour prior to surgery on the day of surgery you are wheeled in the anesthesia part takes around one one and a half hour depending on the anesthesia team as well as the complexity of the case usually a vipal's procedure entails a line in the neck which is known as a central line it entails an arterial line in patients who have cardiac risk you are given general anesthesia we often advocate the use of epidurals which is an injection in your spine for pain relief after the surgery epidural provides very good pain relief after the surgery for three to four days patients can walk with mobile epidurals in their hands when you wake up there will be some tubings that are attached to you as a part of this procedure one is the neckline like i said other is the arterial line if you need it you will have drains which are placed during the surgery we use two drains some centers use one drain there is data of not using a drain but as of now we use two drains one on the right one on the left you will have a urinary catheter for voiding of urine so the end you will have a tube through your nose which is known as a nasogastric tube each of these tubes will come out gradually in your post-operative recovery that we will discuss next. If you are or your loved ones are suffering from cancer and need this procedure, our team has written a book called Taming the Tumor that may answer more of your questions related to cancer. I will leave a link in the description below. Also, if you have any further questions, you can write to us at learnwithadducers at the gmail.com or you can visit our website and have a look at other educational content that we have again the website link is there in the description below 
feel free to contact us and let us know if there are any other surgeries that you would like us to discuss with you. Thank you.